So RESTful is uh, controllers and cost, cost structure. So what exactly is, is RESTful and what it means? Like, Actually, I didn't have the concept, so I had to look it up yesterday. So it says that it's an architecture stack uh, called REST. It's like how we represent the data that is trust. Can you just adjust this a bit? Oh, sorry about that. No problem. I can breathe now. <laughs> <laughs> you get a round of applause, right? That's incredible. <laughs> okay, let's try and get you back in there. Good. Um, back in business? Looks okay. Oh, yeah. It's all right. Codes break every day, so. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Let me just try this out. Turn it off. On again. And. Um, this. This one. Marga. It might be my luck, though. No, it's his laptop. No worries. Already, how I was saying is like, you know, we have been told like, uh, hey, we have to build our APIs in, in a RESTful way. But uh, actually, like, uh, we, we, we don't know how to structure the code behind it, or maybe we know and we, are, we, we don't have this concept real clear, right? So before dive into that uh, way, we are going to see like uh, a RESTful is just a representation of the stake between the, the, the browser and the user, right? Pretty much it says like we need to use the, the, get, the get method to request data from the server and put, pause, and delete just to send data to the, to the uh, servers, right? So that's pretty much the, the, basic, the basic concept uh, about RESTful. I mean, uh, so how can we apply this to our controllers, right? Uh, we can use uh, so many frameworks, right? But you don't need, you don't need to be like tied up to a framework, you pretty much can just build your controllers in such a way that your controllers abide to your endpoints. What it means is like you can you can be focused on your endpoints, and if you have an endpoint to to send data or to persist data to the to the database, you should have like a, at least one method in your controller that controls your resource to represent these changes, right? So we can focus in the seven uh, RESTful method, which is index, show, create, store, edit, and update, also destroy. So usually the index method is just to retrieve data from the database. Like if we have, like, if we have let's see, a dashboard, and we need to see the users of the, of the system, we have like the, our first interaction is going to be like a grid list. So we can retrieve the, this user from the, from the server. So we have the show method, of course, it's like if we need to pretty much see more information from a given user. We have the create method, which is to show like a, a creation a form to create new user and so on. So whatever you are seeing here is pretty much tied up uh, to what uh, our previous speaker was talking about. Like if we design our APIs in, in a such a way that is stressful, we can also implement this concepts in, in, in our code. What is the aim of this? We can keep the code clean, which is re really very important. Uh, and we can, from there, we can like strive uh, towards uh, a better design in our domain. So, 
another thing is like the question that comes around is like, of course, if we have, like for example, if we have a new user, we need to, to uh, operate, uh, we need to send, uh, do some operation upon the uh, user resource. So this is easier, right? Because we can retrieve users and we can also save a new user and we can edit a given user. But what about if I have uh, actions upon this user, right? What about if I have a subscription? What about if I have like a, uh, booking vouchers. What about if I have a, a given organization that it connects to our API, but we need to serve keys to these APIs? So how we go about these designs? So if we come back, if we go back to our previous uh, slide that says how we can abide to the, the, the seven principles controllers, it's like if you have, for example, if you have a, a subscription controller, right? If you have a user that needs to subscribe to your system for some reason. So you can create yourself like a user subscription controller. So if you have this user subscription controller, you can pretty much abide to these seven methods in this controller, and then you, you come back to the, to, to the same establishment, right? I'm gonna design my code in such a way how my, my API is working. So in this way, you can keep controllers clean, and you can pretty much design your code towards your domain. So, the main principle of this, I'm sorry, is like as a lot of L developer, right, be like as I am right now, which is the framework that I'm using the most at the moment, we, could, we have this error when we don't know where to put our code. We have no clue whatsoever, oh, that was my, my, my mistake, what I started. So I started just putting all the logic that I wanted to put in the controller. If I want to do a calculation, put it in the controller. If I want to parse some data, put it in the controller. So what happened is like your controllers are gonna end up in like something called GAT object so that nobody knows what is going on there. So a controller, the, the aim of the controllers is just to take your response and to, uh, to take your request and give you some response. There is nothing else that should happen in the controller, mostly like take the response, parse the data, and send some, take the request, parse the data, and send some response to, to the users, right? So how, does, how can, can we design this thing? Well, if we abide to these methods, and if, I, if we abide to the uh, solid principles, our controller will take the request. If we need to, send, to do some validation, we can create validation objects. If we, can, if we need to parse some data, we can parse some data in, in, in the request, and then we can, all, again, send the, the information back to the user towards our responses. So the question comes around here is like, again, what if I need a different uh, object for a given method? What if I need to, to do something else in my controller? What is gonna happen at this point? Well, if we go and design a new object and inject it to our controller, is the object uh, obligation or, or work to, to do this uh, operation for us? It's not the controller. Of course, I'm not saying like if, if you have a controller and you just need to do a, a small operation, it's not allowed to have this small method in the controller. You can have something there. But after you are writing two, three methods ap apart from the seven principles uh, uh, methods that are restful, you will end up with a really, really bloody controller that is, is no longer maintainable and you are not gonna have idea what is going on there. So as I was saying, the controller is, is, is not, is, they are not supposed to handle heavy logic, valid, uh, like validation, calculation, or conversions, or nothing related to, uh, to that. Like if you need a validation, you can have your, valid, uh, your request validation object, you can inject this request in one of your methods, and you can have this logic in somewhere else. If you need to, uh, the same thing you can do with calculation and conversion. As I was saying, if you, abide to the principle, solid principles and you inject these objects into your controllers, you will have a way to do this operation towards using another uh, uh, objects. So, yes. So validation objects, is, uh, they are like a part of the request. Uh, you can create a, a, a request object that's gonna be injected in your controller. And on there is because that this object extends from the request, you will have your data there and you can uh, like perform any validation that you want in the way that you need. Query to the base using repositories. Uh, there is a problem here, Dan. This is a good one, and it's with our uh, Laravel friends. It's like uh, they have this uh, uh, active record, right? The problem with active record is like there is really impossible to unit test those 
uh, queries there. And if you have an active, re active record in your domain, all of a sudden your domain which operates in user is going to know about everything else that is in somewhere else. I am a Laravel developer, but this is something that is, uh, we need to take care of, right? If you need to operate over the database, it's better if you inject a repository that does this f function for you. Then you can unit test this code and you can have your logic in, in isolation. So you are building your domain there. So if you are working in, in, in a user model, the user model doesn't need to know about subscriptions or, for example, or vouchers or organizations. Right? So that's why it's better to inject these services uh, uh, through repositories. And if also the, the repo or the, or the repos is the one in this case that's going to normalize or sanitize the job objects, right? Because if we remember what a repository is supposed to do, a repo retrieves data from the database and gives you an entity, collect an entity. It can be, if you are getting just one record from, from database, you will get an entity. And this same thing can be parsed, sanitized, validated, or whatever you need in that case. Same thing if you need like uh, more, more than one entity, you can have like a collection of entities. There, there you go. And this is the way kind of how doctrine works. So that's why they, they do this kind of thing. And this is very important, guys. So uh, don't make your controllers to handle heavy logic and just pretty much just have just those controllers just taking your request and send the request to this whatever service you need and just sending back a response from them. So here, like, what about the routes? How I build my routes? Uh, well, there are so many frameworks and libraries that I can help you with that. As I was telling you, like, your routes are going to be pretty much your uh, API endpoints. Uh, when we talk about RESTful, uh, uh, everybody think, OK, this is just an API, right? But you can have an application like an application that doesn't offer, doesn't offer an API, and these controllers and this application can be treated in the same way. So for example, if you, if you are uh, serving, uh, again, if you are uh, modifying a resource over, a, uh, over uh, the browser, right? And this browser, of course, in the browser, we don't have the patch, and we don't have the delete, and we don't have the path method, right? Because they are methods to be handled in the API level. OK, if we don't have those there, we don't need them there. But if we can still have we can still have our persistent layer, which is going to be the store method or the update method. So we can trim out of the controllers. We can trim the, the, the methods that we don't need, and we abide to the uh, principles, which is uh, stick with the seven methods that offers an API endpoint. So okay, we can use Laravel Symfony. There is something called like the fastest route or whatever library out there, so you can use anything to build your routes, right? And this is uh, pretty much more than suggestion. It's like, don't be afraid to create, uh, to create new objects, right? So the, 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 the first thing that I have found in, in all my life is like, why I'm going to need to create a different controller when I can have the, all the logic in a controller in one place? So if I need to modify, if I need to maintain this code, I'm just going to open one file. I'm going to have two dozen lines in this file so I can maintain it, right? So this is going to be like, this is going to be out of control. And I, I have seen it in my life. I pretty much seen it like every other day. And it's like really difficult to maintain code that is not well designed. So it's, that's why we, 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 we need to like split our logic in different uh, objects, right? So the, the usual resistance that I, I can, I can like, I, I have come across is they are too complex. Like people who don't understand how objects relate between each other. The first thing they will tell you, okay, I'd rather have these procedures here in my controller and I don't care about your logic, right? So the logic is too spread out in different places and I can follow up. This is the, the, the things that you will find out there. Like, why do I need to create uh, an object with, uh, with one method? And this is a good one, right? So you will see, like, for example, let's see. Another example is if you, you, are, you, are, you are building an e-commerce. And this e-commerce, you need to, to create products. And you, these products, of course, are going to have pictures and are going to have uh, likes and whatever. So let's see. Let's uh, stick with the, the example between a product and a picture, right? So you can have a controller called Products Controller. This controller is just going to handle the information, of basic information of the product, right? But you also can have 
one controller called uh, uh, Product Pictures Controller, where you can have just one method or two methods. Like, even, it's, it's even possible to have just one callable method we can use invoke in one controller. And it's better to have 200,000 uh, uh, files that send something that will tell you what the, what the code is doing than have 2,000 lines in one controller or in one file. Uh, there is a, where should I put the logic, right? Well, this is, this is uh, really difficult to answer. It's like, for example, what I usually do is I, I, I organize my code based on my domain. If I'm working with products, I will have like a, a root uh, folder called products. And inside this product, I'm going to have a HTTP folder, which represents my HTTP layer. And I will have controllers, middleware, uh, requests, and so on. If you guys are familiar with uh, Laravel, it's pretty much what we have in the, if the, in the app folder by default. So pretty much I'm going to have one app folder per domain. Like if I'm working with, uh, I don't know, if in a blog, I will have a post. So this post, if the post has so much behavior, you, you will find when you need to create this domain section, when there is, there is a part in your system that is attracting a lot of behavior. Like, uh, again, if I go back to the e-commerce solution, right? What is the thing that you will have more behavior on? It's going to be on products. So you, you will have this domain created in your, in your uh, code. And it's going to be pretty much where you are going to start from. Um, the benefits that you, you will see about this, uh, uh, this approach is, is, is scalability. Uh, why? Because if you need to modify something, if you need to, 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 uh, to change something in your domain, you just need to, to swap one controller, one method, and you don't, need, you, you, you don't need to worry about anything else. And if you abide to the solid principles, you will inject the, the, ob the, the respective objects that you need to operate in these controllers. You will have them in the constructor, and you can mock out these objects, and you can unit test your code, which is the most important thing that you can do. So you will have a proper composition, and you will remove the ability to introduce bugs by type hinting on real values. I mean, this is also, I mean, you can do type hinting, but the, the, the real benefit here is like, it's really difficult when you have like a, a, a GAT object, right, which is a file that has more than 1,000 lines, except for example, well, 2,000 lines. Let's, let's say that we have an e-commerce, and our e-commerce is really big, and we can allow uh, our product model to have 2,000 lines, right? So, but it's, 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 it's easier to maintain a, a, a well-designed system where you have different objects that do different things than just putting everything as we usually do in the controllers, and we don't care. So we are just going to put it here, and we will fix it later. Uh, and yes, and for me, it's just the pleasure of doing something different, and. I, I usually strive to do something different every day. And if I learn something new today, I will do it tomorrow. So I have a really a small code here. It's not like the, the biggest code ever. Uh, it's just a representation how, a, uh, how you can structure your uh, uh, controllers. Uh, if, of course, if you have worked with Laravel, it's, uh, uh, you will be familiar with this if you have worked with Symfony. The difference is like Symfony use get and post as a prefix. If you are operating in a get route, you will get get index. But it's the same thing as you have here. You have the index method, which is the one that I was talking about before. Is here you, you, you will use it to show your grids or something. You have the creation, you have the, uh, the store method, and you have the show and all those good stuff right there, right? Uh, so this is going to be product controller. So the one that I was uh, telling you about is product pictures controller, which is the one that's going to handle my logic related with pictures and, uh, and products. If you guys have worked in, in, a, in an e-commerce before, you, you realize that there is uh, a lot of behavior related to a product. So it's really important that you can split out your logic and you can bootstrap your logic I mean, towards your domain, right? So, and what I was telling you about in Laravel, you can, of course, these are Laravel-related uh, examples. You can achieve this with any framework or if you want to do it yourself. So, uh, we can see here, like in the, in the product controller pictures, if you see here in the product controller, we are pretty much, 
if I can find it here, in the update, we are injecting just the Laravel request, right? It's just the plain object. There's nothing is going to happen there. I'm just going to get the whole request, and I'm, I, I, will deal, I, I will deal with it here in, inside my, my method, right? So of course, if, 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 if you are anything like me, when you start doing something where you don't know a framework fully uh, the whole way, to say something, you will put all your logic here, right? And that's perfectly fine. fine. So, but you, can, you have the option also here that to inject a different uh, object, which is like, let's call it personalized objects. They call it uh, requests, request objects, when you can operate before the request hit your route. So in Laravel, uh, you can have um, product requests. You can have this amazing two methods to start with. You have an authorization layer where you can put anything you need there. If you, if you return false from there, of course, that, that request is not going to hit your controller. And uh, in the rules here, you can just pretty much type anything, here, like something like, uh, let's see that the product title is going to be required. So. If, if you are hitting that endpoint with a, with a request that doesn't have a, a pause or a, or, or a data call title there, I mean, the, the, the request is not going to hit your route. And uh, yes, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm sorry for the fast track, but uh, ha, this is like the second presentation that I do ever. So if you have any questions, just hit me up. Otherwise, thank you. <laughs>